Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the glycine receptors. Okay, so uh, we were just discussing what effect on the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane uh, the opening of the glycine receptor is going to have. Okay, so we have opened the glycine receptor, and that is allowing chloride anions into the cell. Now, the chloride anions are coming from somewhere, so they've come from the extracellular fluid. So, when we move them out of the extracellular fluid, that's going to raise the electrical potential of the extracellular fluid. Now, originally, uh, the electrical potential difference from extracellular to intracellular was negative 65 millivolts. So initially, the intracellular electrical potential was lower than the extracellular electrical potential by a whole 65 millivolts. However, we've now made this number smaller and this number bigger. So how much this number here is less than this one will have become even bigger, basically. So this number is going to become more negative. And when you take the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane more negative, we say that the electrical potential difference has been hyperpolarized. Okay? So you've undergone hyperpolarization. So hyperpolarization. So basically, uh, when you hyperpolarize a cell, that's the exact opposite of what you need to do in order to um, cause the cell to actually fire an action potential. So if you want this alpha motor neuron here to fire an action potential, you need to depolarize the electrical potential, not hyperpolarize it. So, there will be other inputs into this neuron which will be stimulatory inputs, okay? So, uh, where should I put these? I'll put them here. Okay, so there will be other synapses onto this motor neuron which might be stimulatory, okay? So, these ones will be producing um, depolarizing currents into the cell. And by the way, I think I should just add something here. This when you open these glycine receptors, you are allowing negatively charged particles to move into the cell. Now, when charged particles move, there is a name for that. When you've got movement of charged particles, it's known as a current. Now, this current is inhibiting the alpha motor neuron. It's stopping it from firing an action potential. So, this current of chloride anions moving into the cell through the glycine receptor is what's known as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Inhibitory, oh sorry, not an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, an inhibitory postsynaptic current. I do apologize for that. Okay, so this is an inhibitory postsynaptic current. Okay, and this is often denoted as IPSC for short, inhibitory postsynaptic current. Okay, it then leads to hyperpolarization, and that hyperpolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane is then what's known as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Okay, so this is often denoted as IPSP, so an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Now, basically, if we've got a stimulatory neuron here, so this other neuron is a stimulatory neuron, that is going to cause what's known as an excitatory postsynaptic potential on this alpha motor neuron's membrane. So it's going to open channels which will allow positively charged ions to move into the cell. Okay, uh, most likely sodium ions will move into the cell. So this excitatory neuron will be releasing a certain neurotransmitter onto this alpha motor neuron, which will be opening sodium channels, allowing sodium to move into the cell, and that's a positively charged current. So that will be uh, making the neuron more likely to fire, and that's called an excitatory postsynaptic current, or an EPSC for short. EPSC. Right, so basically, if we have this excitatory neuron firing at the same time as this inhibitory neuron, then the excitatory neuron will be causing excitatory postsynaptic currents. It will be causing positively charged ions to move into the cell. And this uh, inhibitory uh, neuron here uh, will be causing inhibitory postsynaptic currents. It will be causing uh, negatively charged ions to move into the cell. Now, the question is, if, if you've got positively charged ions moving in and negatively charged ions moving in, 
what there's the capability that they will neutralize each other basically and it will mean that nothing overall happens to this neuron so these inhibitory interneurons uh, basically make it less likely that these alpha motor neurons are actually going to fire so there will be excitatory input and inhibitory input and the inhibitory input is um, is trying to neutralize the excitatory input basically it's trying to stop the alpha motor neuron from being depolarized to the point that it will fire an action potential okay so these inhibitory interneurons are inhibiting alpha motor neurons and stopping them from firing so that's the role of them and if we were to take away this glycinergic transmission and by the way when you've got uh, neurotransmission that is involving glycine you will often hear that referred to as glycinergic neurotransmission so that's an adjective you'll hear quite a lot so if we were to reduce the glycinergic neurotransmission in the brain sorry in the spinal cord what do you think would happen basically well if we were to take away these um, if we were to reduce the glycinergic transmission we'd get less inhibition inhibition of our alpha motor neurons so a bunch of excitatory um, neurons which previously wouldn't have been able to excite the alpha motor neuron because they were being counteracted or counterbalanced by the inhibitory neurons they will now be capable of activating the alpha motor neuron to fire so the alpha motor neurons will fire far too often they'll excite the muscles far too much and you can end up with getting uh, convulsions so uh, uncontrolled um, contractions of the muscles it could also in very very extreme cases it can lead to uh, spastic paralysis where all of the muscles are uh, contracting at the same time and indeed we're going to see a drug uh, known as uh, strychnine uh, which is used as a, a pesticide it's used to kill rats and birds um, and um, the way it works is by effectively causing spastic paralysis uh, which then leads to problems with breathing which cause uh, oxygen delivery to the organs to go down and therefore uh, death uh, so it causes asphyxia basically okay but we'll discuss that more later okay so now what we're going to move on to is the actual structure of these uh, glycinergic um, receptors but we'll do that in the next video